pharaohs, deserts, temples, and a place full of a culture that has some of the richest history that I've ever seen. Let me know what you think of. I'll give you three seconds. If you thought Egypt, then you damn right. I'm gonna let y'all see a little insight on my trip and my experiences, what it was like to visit Egypt. Let's go. It's your boy Jerry G, aka Mr. G is International, coming at you back in full effect with another video. Yo, I swear I'm so excited to show y'all my my trip and our experience through Egypt, man. Like it's crazy to think that I live in Qatar and all it really takes is like a three-hour flight to see something that I've been wanting to really see since like my fifth, sixth grade year. And I was just so captivated with like pyramids and the gods and all these stories that they was telling like Egypt has really always been somewhere that I felt like I just needed to see for myself because I mean let's honestly think about it like some of the monuments and some of the history and like some of the things that you hear about it it, it really sounds unreal but for me I just know I had to put my eyes on it so once I got the full chance to to, to go ahead and put my eyes on it you know you know I absolutely had to jump on the opportunity to go ahead and check out what Egypt is offering. Right now, I really wanna just, you know, just dive deep, you know what I mean, and, and show you all from my perspective what Egypt is really offering, you know, some things that you should pay attention to, look out for if you're, if you're considering going to Egypt, you know what I mean? This is the video for you, let's go. We spent about seven days out in Egypt. I would say that on your very first day, probably just gonna wanna sleep that thing off. Obviously, day one, that's exactly what we did. We chilled in the lobby. Shout out to the La Meridian for having two whole bars in their hotel. They made our lives so much easier. One bar was way too packed. We had the whole option of going to a whole other bar to get them same Long Island iced teas and them same tequila sunrises. And let me tell you, a brother loves them Long Island iced teas and tequila sunrise. That gets your mans and your girls scrape, scrape. When I say scrape, scrape, boy, I mean scrape, scrape, boy. I mean scrape, scrape, boy. I mean scrape, scrape, boy. But that was pretty much day one. It was pretty much a throwaway, you know what I mean? Just kind of the chill and relax. Let me tell you about day two. Day two was something that I don't think I, I, I could have ever experienced. Day two comes you know at a different pace than day one it's time to get down into some shenanigans let me tell you the very first thing that we did day two was pull up on the Giza plateau and see them pyramids paying for tickets and walking up to the pyramids that is a very much surreal experience like you don't feel like you've actually seen these pyramids until you've put your hands on it like it's some crazy stuff the things that you're seeing in your social studies book whatever book you read in whatever you see on tv it absolutely does not do the justice of a monument standing 450 450 50 feet in the air and it's three of them things it's three of them things you often catch yourself talking about fam like what's going on fam i cannot believe i'm here right now fam how did they do this right now fam this is so surreal like you have all these questions going through your head to try to put answers to how you are witnessing something that was built so long ago, a brother like me, like I don't just want to see some stuff, like I want to get into some stuff. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a big gamer. 
and one of my favorite games is Assassin's Creed. Recently they put out Assassin's Creed Origin and they did the whole Egypt backstory behind it. My man Bayak is able to get in all these pyramids and see all these tombs. So you know I kind of felt like I, I was in my Bayak bag and I wanted to get in all these tombs. So for sure when they gave us the opportunity to climb inside the Great Pyramid, man, that walk inside them pyramids to get to the tomb, it is something crazy. Something, something crazy. Like, yo, I had to take like three or four different breaks just to get to the top. Like, that walk up, and it was a very steep walk just to get to the, to the tomb room where his casket was supposed to be at was a beast. Not only was it steep, it was very narrow. So I would caution for those that have like claustrophobia and things like that, like, you know, make sure you take the proper steps to go on and get up that thing. Cause when I say it was narrow, boy, it was narrow, boy. We was all on top of each other and we were just kind of crawling over each other like got dog on spider monkeys and we was just moving and grooving and trying to do what we was doing and got dog on. <laughs> It's supposed to be like the guardian of the pyramids. It's supposed to be face, you know, unless you come around here, you got to see me. It is literally the guardian of Giza Plateau. Now, when you see the Sphinx, you know, you'll see things like its nose has been knocked off. And that's just from things like time passing, earthquakes, weather conditions people looting, people up to no good, causing damage to these structures, but the Sphinx definitely still stands. The fact of the matter is, the Sphinx is one of the absolute largest architectural structures that was built back in ancient Egyptian times. Seeing the Sphinx, it just felt so powerful. It just felt so strong, like you felt the energy of so many people that put their blood, sweat, and tears behind this Sphinx and what it represented and where it stands in 2020, y'all. So leaving the pyramids and the Sphinx, we definitely made our way to the Egyptian Museum. Definitely top five dead or alive museums that I've ever seen in my life. This is one of the biggest, most extensive museums that I've ever seen in my life. It holds over 120 thousand, three, thousand artifacts full of nothing but Egyptian history. You gotta keep going back to the fact that if you're considering visiting Egypt, you're definitely considering because of some of the history that is compounded into this country. I'm talking from tombs, from things that they covered, from temples, like all these things are compacted into one museum. It's two floors, and unfortunately, even though we only spent about an hour's worth of time in this museum, it's not enough to really get a full grand scale idea of what this museum holds. You get to see things like the pieces that were recovered from Tutankhamun's tomb, all the gold, all the riches, his actual sarcophagus, the gold plated, things that were all over his his tomb and his casket i mean it is unreal not only do you get to see things like that you definitely get to see a few mummy pieces in there as well and i'm talking mummies that still are wrapped in their cloth and still got hair on their head and all you're really seeing is skin and bones i mean this museum is very extensive the fact that you're in egypt i would definitely recommend that you go take some time and go check out the egyptian museum stay there all day. After leaving the museum, you know, I think it was time for us to take a trip on the Nile River. Egypt and the Nile River have like this synonymous till death do us part 
kind of bond. Knowing how important the Nile River has been to Egypt and knowing the relationship that the two have amongst each other, it was no brainer that me and Phoenix Simone definitely take a trip on to the Nile River. We hopped on a Felucca, one of Egypt's oldest and local kind of boats. We definitely sailed on the Nile River for 30 minutes. Everything was calm, the water was nice and cold. Obviously, the type of person your boy is, I was looking for crocodiles and crazy kind of wildlife and fish in the water, but that was definitely something we didn't have to worry about. Riding down the Nile River was a dope experience. You know, that's one of those things I never thought I would do. To put an appropriate nightcap on the night, they definitely have like these sound and light shows to where you sit smack dead in front of the Giza Plateau, to where you have the Sphinx and the three pyramids facing you. And they put lights on them, they put laser beams on them, they have speakers set up to where they have sounds. And they're telling just, you know, the story of Egypt and these different pharaohs and all of the things that took place during those old dynastic times. Personally, it was absolutely cold and we were so tired that by the end of it we didn't want no food. We was just like, yo, take us back to the hotel, we trying to pass out. But for what it was worth, the light and sound show was lit. It's only like 45 minutes. If you're in Egypt, you just go check it out one time. It was definitely time to make the transition to the city, Memphis. Now, if you know anything about Memphis, Memphis is one of the oldest cities in the entire Egyptian history. Most people think that the three pyramids that they see wherever they may see them out on the Giza Plateau are the original and some of the first pyramids, but in all actuality, that's not true. Someone had to figure out and attempt their best hand at making this pyramid structure. So, out in Memphis, out in the Saqqara Desert, that's actually where you'll find three pyramids that were structured in attempts to build the perfect pyramids that you see out in the Giza Plateau. You'll see the Bent Pyramid, you'll see the Red Pyramid, and you'll see Djoser's Step Pyramid. It's all out there in Memphis. Memphis was really a hub back for ancient Egyptian. It was a religious cult center, the streets thrived, people were moving, kings and pharaohs ruled unapologetically. Things that were happening in Memphis were going and business was booming. Monuments were being built. People came there to praise the temples and worship their deities. Like Memphis was that spot. They're called Mustabas, and this particular pyramid has six Mustabas. When you look at it, it's literally six steps. It's one level, two level, three level, four level, five level, six level. And this is the original design of the pyramid. Years later, the Bent Pyramid comes into fruition. Now, this king says he wants to do something completely different than what Joser and he had did with his step pyramid. So he aimed for the stars and tried to create again the triangular pyramid. Now if you look at 59 degrees, you'll see that it just keeps going up, 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 up. It never really connects. So once they noticed that it never really connected, they had to figure out a way, well how do we get this to connect? Hence, is why you see when you look at this pyramid, it's going at a certain angle and then it just bends in. Hence, you get the big pyramid. Years later, you had another guy come into the fold. His pyramid, the red pyramid, he was the innovator and the guy that created the very first and the perfect pyramid. Following his model, it led to the three pyramids that we all know and love. take another trip on the Nile River. It was this big old cruise ship. They had a restaurant inside it. They had a local band playing the drums. They had a belly dancer giving off the traditional Egyptian vibes. I mean, it was, it was really a dope time. It was about an hour and a half. And I would recommend, especially if you got a significant other, man, just cruise along the Nile River, you know, take in some vibes, drink some drinks, watch the belly dancer do her magic, listen to the music being played. I mean, it was really, it was really a dope time. Day four saw a dramatic change in pace. We left Cairo and flew from Cairo to Luxor. Like I 
I told you earlier, Luxor is completely different than Cairo. It is a distinct difference between Cairo and Luxor. So much so that you hear it immediately as soon as you walk out the airport. You walk out of Cairo International Airport, you'll hear it everywhere. The hustle, the bustle, people everywhere. You walk out of Luxor Airport, why it's almost something in the air letting you know that you are no longer in this piece of Egypt. You are in a completely different place and this place is so great. The greenery around is so beautiful. I feel like if I had to pick between the two, pyramids and all, I would definitely take Luxor. Luxor is definitely a spot for calming your mind, being on your peaceful chill. Like Luxor is definitely that spot. The very first thing that we did as soon as we landed was head to Karnak Temple. What I noticed, Luxor is loaded with temples. These temples were places where the locals, where the higher deities, where the people that ran these particular buildings were able to praise and worship and send thanks to whoever they wanted to send thanks to. And these temples were massive. The Karnak Temple was where we started our journey. You've seen hieroglyphics, you've seen the carvings and some of the pillars, it was still there. And it's crazy to think that in 2020, that these things are still standing. You can see all the stone statues as if nothing ever happened to them. Karnak had it all. Tall obelisk, I'm talking about rows full of sphinx, yards, miles full of sphinx. And you'll see those sphinx leading right into the Karnak Temple. If you're ever out in Luxor, I would highly suggest that you go take some time and go check out Karnak Temple. I mean, it is a sight to behold. After leaving the Karnak Temples, the next place to visit was the Luxor Temple. Now the Luxor Temple, that's a pretty big temple in itself, you know, kind of similar to the Karnak Temple, but I think in my personal opinion, just a tad bit smaller. Now from what I know, it wasn't necessarily a place to go and worship specific gods. It was a place just to give your offerings, your worship to whoever you believed in. Just being in these two temples alone, Karnak and Luxor Temple, that's probably gonna take up most of your day. I think if you're trying to fit anything inside of those two, you know, you're probably gonna be very tired and really pushing and stretching for time. Unfortunately, the type of people that we are, we like to push the limit and we like to stretch the time. So after checking out both temples and heading back to the Steinberger Hotel out in Luxor for about three hours, we definitely had to hit back out on the town and we definitely got to see the city from an interesting perspective. We were able to hop on a carriage that had a horse and we were able to really just check out the whole city from horseback. Your boy got to ride right on back of that horse and really see what the what the city was talking about. And man, let me tell you, the people were so friendly, they were so genuine, they were so nice. They were just handling their business, worrying about their own lives. They weren't really trying to check and pay attention to anything else that was going on outside of what they had going on. I think one of the dopest things that I got to do while I was on horseback was actually sit down and take some time to drink some sugar cane juice. That sounds crazy, right? Sugar cane juice. You know it ain't nothing but sugar and sugar in juice form, but I drank it and it tasted good and it made me go mm 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 and I got to watch Phoenix Simone hug up on a horse and meanwhile while she hugging up on a horse, I was just like mm 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 while I'm drinking my juice. It was such a dope time. It was such a dope time. I think one of the dopest things that I really enjoyed was just riding around the city on horseback and seeing things like the Karnak Temple, the Luxor Temple, just being lit up and the body of water surrounding it. I mean, it was a blast to see. Yo, shout out to Luxor. Like, y'all really got it going on and popping out there. One of the main differences that you'll hear is the difference in how they buried and honored their pharaohs and kings. In Cairo, out in the Giza Plateau, they built the pyramids. In Luxor, you had the Valley of the Kings. Out in Luxor, people was peeping game. They saw that these big old monuments was getting robbed, was getting looted. People were going in and out trying to steal stuff out of them. So the thought process became, I don't necessarily want my tomb to be protruding and standing tall and showing big face. I want my stuff to be hidden. So should somebody come find my stuff, they got work for it. And so became the Valley of the Kings. The Valley of the Kings is literally a royal cemetery that houses up to 62 tombs. 
up to 62 Pharaoh's tombs. And literally when you walk inside, it's tombs every which way. Some of these tombs even got multiple tombs in it. Ramses II, he got a tomb for just his kids that hold up to 200 different tombs. Holmes is out here getting it in. Not him and his kids, but he got his own separate tomb somewhere else. So the Valley of the Kings was definitely that spot. They just really didn't want to be out and about. They wanted their stuff to be a little bit more secluded. They wanted their stuff to hold and preserve a little bit more and just be a little bit more harder for people to come in and try and steal their stuff. One of the most famous pharaohs that we spoke about earlier, King Tutankhamun, his tomb is actually still housed at the Valley of the Kings right now. Ramses the second, Ramses the third, Ramses the fourth, and all the way up is 62 tombs. And the interesting thing about the Valley of the Kings is that when you're looking at it face on, you can see that even though there's no pyramid structure at the very tip of the mountain form, that it shapes and it shows a pyramid form that resembles the old style of the tombs of the Giza Plateau pyramids and the pyramids out in the Sakura Desert. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I went out today to go to the Valley of the Kings with my nice little pea coat on, and man, it started off extra, extra, extra cold, but I swear about three hours and walking around and climbing inside and outside and walking through some of these tombs, man, it felt like it was a million degrees outside. But after getting you a nice little leg workout, walking in, upside down, crossways, diagonal ways, inside some of these tombs and out, boy, I'm telling you, boy, it was hotter than a hot summer mug. <laughs> <laughs> After leaving the Valley of the Kings and taking all that in, the very next step was to go see one of the queens that I held in high regards. Queen Hatshepsut. Hot chicken soup. Hot chapsu. Queen Hatshepsut. Now, she has one of the dopest stories that I've ever heard back in Egyptian times. You know, they wanted to keep everything running through the bloodline, so it was normal for brothers to marry sisters, so that nothing would flow and come out of the family line. It always stayed in the family line. The Queen Hatshepsut, she wasn't having that. She was one of the most powerful and strongest pharaohs that Egypt has ever seen. In fact, ruling for up to at least 19 years during her time. Problem with Queen Hatshepsut is that she had a nice little stepson who she did not spend and love on the best that she could. Holmes actually grew up to despite her and everything that Queen Hatshepsut built as far as temples, monuments that she built, paintings, scriptures on the walls, he destroyed all of that. He did not want her history to pass through. So, one of the places that we went to go visit was the mortuary site of Queen Hatshepsut. Don't think about this site. Most of the mortuary sites, when they go to mummify the king, queen, whoever it may be, these sites can only be used at one time. These sites were specifically built to house the people that mummified them for the next 70 plus days. Another dope thing about Queen Hatshepsut, she ruled with such an iron fist and was definitely one of Egypt's greatest rulers that she didn't even want it to be seen as a woman. In every monument that you've seen, in every depiction, in every painting that you see, she is dressed and painted as a man. You would never know that she was a woman that ruled Egypt during one of its best times through prosperity. Fortunately, it was time to take our talents back to Cairo. We didn't really do much outside of sit at the bar and enjoy a happy hour and really just talk about all the surreal things we've seen. It was the end of the end. It was time to leave Egypt and head on back here to Doha, Qatar. Anyway, that's all we got for y'all. This was our little trip out here in Egypt. You know, we definitely got to see some surreal things, some things that, you know, we both wanted to see since we were little kids. And, you know, it was just an amazing thing to be able to see those things in person. Like, I don't think out of all the traveling that I've done, 
that anything compares to some of the monuments that we've been able to see. You know, I think just the, the thought process behind the fact that, oh my gosh, like these people did this thousands and thousands of years ago. And in 2020, you know, you're able to still see these things and people are able to still dig and find so much new stuff and uncover new monuments and see new hieroglyphics and see all these things. Like Egypt is definitely a hidden treasure by the term of the word it's a hidden treasure so i encourage anybody who has the time who's in the vicinity who's curious who's ever thought about it who's ever teetered on the line definitely take that chance like egypt has so many things it has so much to offer to a person that is ridiculous with that being said i just want to send a special shout out and thank you to memphis tours Y'all definitely hooked me up. I have been talking to Memphis Tours for quite some time, and there have been a few other agencies that I was thinking about talking to and dealing with, but Memphis Tours was the one I decided to go through, and they came through like none other. They had everything planned out so nicely. The Egyptologist was on point. They knew their information. Big shout outs to my man, Nash. Thank you very much. Thank you to my man, the Bill. There was never a point to where we was just sitting down wondering and twiddling our fingers and wondering what's next. They had everything mapped out nicely. Thank you to my man, Wali. These guys were the one that kept our trip spinning. No problems, no issues, no nothing. These guys were the ones that had the know all, the be all. I want y'all to take some time, go check out the gram. Go check at Phoenix underscore Simone. Go check at G is International. Hit the YouTube. Check out our video. Check out our content. Drop a comment. Drop a like. Subscribe. Let us know what you think. Let us know what we could be doing better. Let me know what you're seeing. Let me know how you're feeling about Egypt. Let us know what's going on. Let us know the opinions on this vlog right here. Let us know where you want to see us go next. We really invested into this travel culture and we really trying to see this entire world and as much of it as possible. We really trying to bring the world to y'all. With that being said, it's your boy Jerry G. This is G is International. Thank y'all again for taking some time and checking out our video. I love y'all. Peace. Good night.